Hi, this is Mark Costco in Jackson, Mississippi. This video demonstrates rotation of a post jag toric multifocal and further securing of the lens with reverse optic capture. We've done some lidocaine and some viscote. If you look closely, you'll see the edge of the Yag capsulotomy. Um, this is a Grover Feldman spatula invented for Aventurno bleb revisions that I used to go underneath the edge of the anterior lens capsule. Um, we'll sort of uh, work our way around a little bit um, and then place initially some viscose underneath the edge of the capsule. Um, we're post shag, non vitrectomized eye. Um, you'll see we, we do some vitrectomy later. Uh, but we're just going to try to work some viscoelastic. I couldn't quite get underneath the edge of the capsule at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to do a two-handed technique to lift up on the edge of the capsule and then slip underneath the capsule with the visco cannula. And you can see some viscoelastic going around. Um, the haptic at the top of your screen freeze up relatively easily. Um, it didn't quite go at first, so I just decided to push a little bit more viscoelastic around it. This is a toric panoptics, and if you, if you look closely, you, the markings that I have on the eye are for the correct axis uh, versus it's currently aligned 80 degrees um, incorrectly. Um, the surgeon who referred the patient still had um, access to um, uh, original IOL calcs, and so I knew where it was supposed to be, and I was able to use the Ascaris uh, post toric results analyzer calculator that was done by, I believe, John Birdall. Uh, and also do a new IOL master myself to see where I think a toric should go. And I usually kind of average the results of the Birdall calculator and the repeat uh, IOL master. Um, we are aware that there's vitreous behind us, so we gave a little bit more viscoelastic. It's this haptic at the bottom of the screen that's really problematic. Alcon lenses, uh, sing single piece acrylic Alcon lenses have a terminal bulb on the end of them that tends to get fibrosed. Also, Alcon acrylic in general is much more reactive to the capsule. Uh, you just get much more um, fibrosis and capsular reaction and scarring and even phimosis sometimes if your rexus is too small. Um, it is um, much more challenging to exchange an Alcon single piece that has been there for a while than it is to exchange a Johnson & Johnson or Bosch & Loam. Uh, but you see, we finally got that freed up. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm, I've realized that in the process of all these maneuvers, I've, I've pretty much lost the posterior capsule. So I'm bringing that anterior to the anterior capsular excess. And I, I know it's hard to appreciate that in this two-dimensional video, but on the left side of the eye, the optic is now anterior, or maybe not yet. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get it anterior to the um, anterior capsule. And I, actually, it is. It's a, sort of an optical, maybe? I don't know. See, even I, watching it now, I have a hard time telling. But it, at the end of it, I, yeah, now I've got it anterior. You can kind of see that sort of football-like shape where I've brought the optic anterior to the edge of the anterior capsular axis, which very, very fortunately was round and centered and appropriately sized. Uh, but basically in all the maneuvers of uh, freeing the haptics, the jagged edges of the YAG capsulotomy sort of ran out even further. 
and I know that this lens would not have been stable for um, in the bag or in the capsular fornix fixation. So I did a reverse optic capture. I've not aligned it all the way to the intended axis yet, but I just started getting paranoid about the vitreous behind us, and I, I just decided to go in with a simple anterior vitrectomy. Most of what's coming out is viscoelastic. Okay, now here what I'm gonna do is I came out briefly, and I, as well as I remember what I do is I go back in and I slip. In just a second, I'm gonna slip underneath the optic. Now I'm, I'm, I'm underneath the optic. And um, you know, this is a heavily edited video. A lot of viscoelastic was injected. So I think a lot of what you just saw come out was viscoelastic. I, I had sped it up some. So I've, I've reformed with uh, viscoelastic here. Um, and some of the viscoelastic almost gives the illusion of the vitreous strand. And I get paranoid in a minute and inject some triamcin alone to, to look. But here you see that I've, I've spun it to what we want and I'm trying to ensure I've got good reverse optic capture. You see a freeze frame there, it's perfectly aligned. Uh, there's viscoelastic in the eye and it's a little hard to stain vitreous when there's all that viscoelastic, but I'm, I'm trying anyway. Um, it, the way it sort of jets through the viscoelastic almost looks like there is vitreous, but you see I just turned my infusion on and it's, it's not really vitreous, it's just triamcinolone particles suspended in viscoelastic. Um, now, is that because I never got any vitreous in the anterior chamber, or is it because I vitrectomized it all before I put triamcinolone in? Who knows, but uh, the, the end result is we want to leave a clean eye and not have vitreous herniated around the edge of the optic uh, with uh, traction on it. Uh, so we're behind the optic again, uh, just trying to make sure that we, we don't have any prolapse vitreous. Notice how I, where I hold the um, infusion, I'm keeping the eye pressurized uh, while I get my sort of seal between the vitreous cavity and the IOL, just ensuring that I've still got a good reverse optic capture. Reverse optic capture, you can kind of see sort of like a football shape of the, of the capsule. Um, and um, we'll hydrate our wounds, um, keeping the infusion in while I hydrate the one on the right side, and then I'll come out and do the left side. And that's, that's it, the patient did great. Uh, two eye surgeons walk into a national park. Thank you. That was my dad, retired eye surgeon.